سبحان الذي أسرى بعبده ليلا من المسجد الحرام إلى المسجد الأقصى إلى المسجد الأقصى الذي باركنا حوله لنريه من آياتنا إنه هو السميع البصير بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولا مبعد جماعة المسلمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أهلا وسهلا ومرحبا بكم جميعا أينما كنتم Welcome to each and every single one of you wherever you might be This is our program Palestine the Holy Land and Alhamdulillah we are going to on this day of Jumu'ah, may Allah SWT grant it to be a blessed day for each and every single one of us, for the entire Ummah of Muhammad Salawatu Rabbi wa Salamuhu Alayhi. We are going to continue from where we left off yesterday, speaking about Nimrud, Numrud, the one who rebelled against Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And the potential candidate for that figure of of Numrud, the figure of Naram Sin, who was the awwal man tajabbara fil ard, the first tyrant on earth. Awwal man idda'a al-rububiyya, the first one to claim divinity for himself. And this is to be found in the archaeological record. And this certainly matches with the statements of the greatest of the mufassireen from the classical period, Al-Imam Al-Tabri, Al-Imam Al-Qurtubi, Ibn Kathir, wa ghayruhum, and others besides them, who all agree with these muwasafat, with these attributes of the personage of Nimrud, the one who rebelled. And so when you look at Naram Sin, being the grandson of Sargon the Great, who founded the first empire in this world, the Akkadian Empire. This is according to the archaeological record. And if we just bring up the slide from where we left off last week, in actual fact, it was the slide just before this one. The excavations of, of Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar was the last of the Neo Babylonian emperors or rulers and he is considered by some experts to be the first archaeologist in the world based on the foundation deposits that he discovered and analyzed in 550 BC he discovered he discovered the deposits of the temples of Shamash the sun god, the warrior goddess, Anunitu, both located in Sipar, one of the old Sumerian city-states, and the sanctuary that Naram Sin built to the moon god located in, in Haran. And he also restored them. In actual fact, he repaired three temples, the sanctuary of the moon god Sin in Haran, and the sanctuaries of Anunitu and Shamas in, in Sipar. So when we analyze the cylinder, then we actually find this information of this first archaeologist in history, the king Nebuchadnezzar, who reveals to us that it was indeed Naram Sin who built this temple to the moon god in the same city that Nabi Ibrahim والسلام, lived in and in fact gave da'wah to his father, called his father to the worship of the one God Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and called his people away from the worship of all of these false gods, all of these idols and the moon and the stars and the planets that they were worshipping. In our next slide, We see in this slide again the type of tyranny 
that naram sin awwal man tajabbara fil ard this is taken from a relief of prisoners of war and in actual fact if you look at the picture in its original form it is very disturbing why right? because these captives are stark naked from head to toe this is the kind of brutality that took place in these days and uh, you can see how these captives are literally they are connected to each other by way of something that looks like a ladder but it is literally each and every single one of their necks is in a vice grip in this wooden type structure that has sort of lashed them together and they are being exported they are being taken away uh, to be sold into slavery so you know when we read the archaeological record and we see the description of Nimrod according to the classical sources in our mufassirin the tafasir that have been authored by our classical scholars as well as what Bani Israel has narrated then we find that it is almost a perfect match that Naram Sin perhaps and of course we don't say this with certainty but perhaps indeed he was Nimrud he was that king who ruled in the time when Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, the Prophet Abraham came into this world in the next uh, slide I've just prepared some of the main points here if we can just zoom in on that so here are some of the reasons for Naram Sin the fourth ruler of the Akkadian Empire the grandson of Sargon of Kish and the first one to claim divinity for himself these are some of the reasons for Naram Singh to be Nimrod number one he was possessor of the kingdom here we find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the debate that Ibrahim والسلام, had with the king Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says an atahu Allah al-mulk alam tara ila alladhi haja Ibrahim fi rabbihi an atahu Allah al-mulk do you not see the one whom debated with Abraham pertaining to his creator and sustainer that Allah had given him the dominion Allah had given him this great dominion and empire, Al-Mulk, not just any city-state, but Al-Mulk had given him the dominion of the known world. And it's because of this and him standing up to the revolt that took place when he took power and the crushing defeat that he meted out on his enemies, that this arrogance went into his heart and he felt that he could now declare himself to be one that is equal or even a god amongst the pantheon of the false gods of the Akkadian and Sumerian people. So he, indeed he was the possessor of a great kingdom, the first, the first empire in this world. Number two, He's the first one to rule with tyrannical arrogance in the way that he defeated and humiliated and brutalized his enemies. Number three, he's the first one to rule from the east to the west. We looked at the Qawl of Mujahid ibn Jabr, the student of Abdullah ibn Abbas and the greatest from amongst the Mufassirin of the Tabi'een where Mujahid narrates ملك الأرض مشرقها ومغربها أربعة نفر مؤمنان وكافران that there were four people that ruled the entire world they had control over the entire known world from from east to west from east to west we've looked at the map before the entire area from lower Mesopotamia from the Zagros Mountains in Iran all the way up to the Taurus Mountains 
on the borders of Turkey and Armenia, right down into the land of Phoenicia, to the towns of Babylon, across even the ocean to the island of, of Cyprus. That was the known world at that time, and he ruled over the, over the east and over the west. Number four, he's the first one to claim divinity. In that same debate, Qala ana uhi wa umit. He said, I give life and I cause death. And when we look at the statements of Ibn Kathir, Rahimullah Ta'ala, in his Al Bidai wa Nihayi, when he describes Numrud, awwal man idda'a al rububiyyah, the first one to claim divinity. And this is in the archaeological record that Naramsin is the first ruler on earth ever known to claim divinity for himself. Number five, he embodies the name Numrud. We said that this is a, a Semitic word. In other words, it fits in Aramaic, it fits in Hebrew, it fits in Arabic. And Hebrew, Al-Ibriya, and Arabic, Al-Arabiya, are sister languages and daughter languages of Al-Aramiya of Aramaic. So these three root letters, even in the Aramaic language, because Numrod is an Aramaic name, coming from the three root letters of Marada, Marada, not Da, Marada means to become sick. Marada, Biddal, means to rebel. And if we just take the Arabic alone, Marada Yamrudu Namrud. Namrud literally means we rebel. And Nimrud in Hebrew means exactly the same thing to we rebel. That's what it means. So, who fits this uh, name better than anybody at that time? It is indeed Naram Sin who rebelled, even in the eyes of the people, by destroying the temple of of Enlil in Eridu. In actual fact, there was at a much, much later period, there was a poem written, The Curse of Akkad. From the people's perspective, who were idol worshippers, they believed that these false gods, these false deities that they were worshipping, that they were worshipping, that they caused the destruction of the Akkadian Empire because of the rebellion of of Nimrud against their gods and the destruction that he caused to the temple of, of Enlil in Eridu. Of course, from our perspective, as Muwahideen, as people of Tawheed, that only believe and worship the one God, the creator, cherisher, nourisher, sustainer, manager, controller, owner, and ruler of everything in the heavens and on earth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we believe that this indeed was a punishment from Allah. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punished him for his claim to divinity, just like Allah SWT punished Fir'aun. When he said, Ana Rabbukum al-A'la, fa nakal al-Akhirati wal-Ula. And so Allah SWT gave him the punishment for the first and last statement. What is the first statement? Ma alimtu min, ma alimtu lakum min ilahin ghayri. I don't know of any God for you, he said to his people, Fir'aun, Pharaoh. He said, I don't know of any God for you besides me. And then his second statement was, أَنَا رَبُّكُمُ الْأَعْلَى فَأَخَذَهُ اللَّهُ نَكَالَ الْآخِرَةِ وَالْأُولَى This is one of the tafasir, one of the exegesis pertaining uh, to these two verses, that these were the two statements of, uh, of Fir'aun, and there was 40 years in between the two statements, and he hadn't changed, he was still claiming divinity, and so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed him. Drowned him on this earth, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cast him into the fire on the day of of Yawm Al-Qiyamah, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about that in the Holy Quran. And Fir'aun, we're still going to speak about him. He's still coming. We are still busy with, with Nimrud, with Numrud, with the one who rebelled against Allah. Tajabbara fil ard was an, a tyrannical ruler on, on this earth. Idda'a rububiyya, claimed divinity for himself. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed him and destroyed his and destroyed his kingdom. With regards to a gnat, a type of mosquito going into his nose 
and getting stuck in his head and him beating himself to death. Allahu alam mimma la na'lam. We have from Bani Israel, the Prophet said, Hadithu an Bani Israel wa la haraj. Narrate from the children of Israel, no problem. But of course, something which we cannot f- confirm or be certain about that they narrate a story of Titus, the son of Vespasian, that um, destroyed Al Bayt al Maqdis. He destroyed Bayt al Maqdis and Al Masjid al Aqsa in the year 70. He was the Roman legionnaire that was sent to quell the the Jewish rebellion, the Jewish revolt that was taking place in Jerusalem at that time. And they destroyed Beit al-Maqdis. They burnt it to the ground and destroyed Masjid al-Aqsa. It is said that he, Titus, according to Bani Israel, that a gnat went up into, this is like uh, the so-called lowest or you know, s- smallest and most insignificant type of creature uh, went up into his nose and started eating at his brain. And eventually, when he died and they opened up, this gnat had become so big in his brain and had caused his death. Allah Allah knows that which we do not know. But we don't have any authentic narration pertaining to the same happening to Nimrod just like we don't have an authentic relation narration uh, for it happening to Titus or for anyone else for that matter this is just something that has been narrated and has been given to us and left for us in the Torah and it's something that we can narrate but certainly we don't certainly we don't have any certainty as if as to whether it happened or not. Um, just a correction. Yesterday we mentioned about 56 and 36 years. It was 56 years that Sargon, the grandfather of Naram Sin, ruled for. He ruled for 56 years, where Naram Sin only ruled for 36 years. He ruled for 36 years. And when he died, that's when the Akkadian Empire started falling apart. But during his reign, there was a huge drought. And, um, you know, when it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it very clear in the Holy Quran. If the people of the town, if the people of the, of the country could only truly believe and fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and shield themselves from Allah's displeasure, Allah would have opened up the heavens and the earth and brought great amounts of blessings for them. So, the Arabs they say things are known by their opposites so if the people are disbelieving if they are associating partners in the worship of Allah and they are rebelling against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will withhold those blessings and this is what happened to the Akkadian Empire this is exactly what happened to the Akkadian Empire there was a great drought and eventually a famine spread in the land and the people revolted and uh, the Gutians came down from the mountains and they destroyed the Akkadian Empire. This, this, t- this uh, capital city, Akkad, the capital city, Akkad, which is, which is now a lost city, but there is an opinion that the reason why they haven't found it is because, because it lies under the city of Baghdad. Agad, Baghdad. We're not saying that... Uh, there's necessarily an etymological connection here, but this is one of the theories that the ancient city of Akkad, the capital of the Akkadian Empire, from where Naram Sin ruled from the east to the west, that that lies now buried under the city of, of Baghdad. Inshallah, look forward to being with you next week when we are going to do the first of many piecemeal stories of the life of Nabi Ibrahim from the Holy Quran, when he gave his first da'wah to his, to his father. And inshallah, we'll leave that for Monday, bi ta'ala. I leave you all in the protection of Allah. Juma Mubaraka, kullu amu antum bi khair, bi sihhati wa salama, wa al-afiti wa al-karama, wa alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.
سبحان الذي أسرى بعبده ليلا من المسجد الحرام إلى المسجد الأقصى إلى المسجد الأقصى الذي باركنا حوله لنريه من آياتنا إنه هو السميع البصير